Hi. Uh, let me start my presentation. One of the most important and provocative elements of Robert McCreary's crypt theory lies in the delinea its delineation of a cultural system under neoliberalism neoliberalism that works not so much by explicit exclusion but by superficial or selective inclusion of minorities under the guise of tolerance or diversity. Flexibility now signifies the desirable capacity by which some bodies all too often heterosexual able bodied but able, able, able bodies can profit, while what can require certain other bodies, namely he queer and disabled bodies to flexibly comply for working for the former's success possible. At the same time, ironically enough, there is a, tw a tendency that the that term grip is often used with an emphasis on its flexible or stretchy nature, like the term queer has been celebrated for its fluid, boundary crossing and transgressive capacity. Carrie Sundahl, for example, emphasizes the similarity between these fields in their inclusive or expansive expansive design designation by claiming that, quote, the term cripple, like queer, is fluid and ever-changing, and this fluidity of, this both, fluidity of both terms makes it likely that their boundaries will dissolve, unquote. Likewise, the re recent discussion around the post-human seems to share this fascination towards the radical potential of disability as the boundary crosser, applying, applying the rotsy Brought to Rydotti's study of the post-human into the field of critical disability studies, Dan Goodley, Rebecca Rothen, and Kathleen Ranswick currently present a possibility of the post-human disability studies, claiming that, quote, if the post-human condition is characterized by assemblages that connect the subject to her, his outside, then disability allows us to think across binaries of self, other, nature, technology, and human machine, unquote. In this sense, Goodley states that, quote, disability is, in many senses, a quintessential post-human position. And furthermore, disability is desired as a post-human ideal, unquote. In spite of the uh, undoubted significance of these arguments, However, what I am concerned about in this I would like to argue today is that the new Libya request for flexible bodies constructs not only heterosexual, able-bodied subject, but also some of queer and disabled subject. In other words, we need to be alert to the unequal allocation of flexibility within minorities, as several queer scholars point, point out the current rise of homonormative movement has emerged by responding the new liberal request of flexibility, along with the privatized version of gay rights to which very limited populations have access. By presenting an analysis of the current situation surrounding Tokyo and cultural representation of prosthetic bodies as boundary crossing superhumans, I'd like to critically consider the complicated power structure produced by an equal location of flexibility and how the neoliberal request for flexible flexibility differentiates the body that is capable and thus desirable from the one that is not. So such differentiation of the minorities is becoming more and more explicit in today's situation around Tokyo, where 2020 Olympic and Paralympic is scheduled to take place. Now let me introduce, the, in the case of Shibuya, which is the one of Tokyo's most colorful, busy words, and it's a district also known as the center of Japanese youth, in fashion, youth fashion and culture. The world's new mayor, Ken Hasebe, won his election for E on a pledge on to enact the diversity policies, including the legislation to issue Japan's first same-sex relationship certification which has no legal binding, binding force. At the same time, Hasebe has been facilitating privatization project of a public park in Shibuya in parallel with brutal and forceful expulsion of homeless people from the park. So I'm now showing the picture of the park being guarded. And this is the, here's another picture of the public water fountain in the park, which 
with its top has been removed by Shibuya Watch in order to keep homeless people away from the park. Mayor Hasebe recently expresses his appetite for attending to disability issues in his diversity policies, and it is an advertising strategy of Meet the Superhumans campaign in 2012 London Paralympic, and that has inspired him. He has repeatedly shown his enormous in interests in 2020 Tokyo Paralympic rather than Olymp Olympic, saying that, quote, I've been much attracted by the poster of London Paralympic with a phrase of meet the superhumans. It portrays the people with the physical impairments and people in wheelchairs as the super cool and stylish. The words the word superhuman, I suppose, converts our image of disabled people from the object of pity into the object of respect." Unquote. So this is one of the posters of Meet the Superhumans, made by Channel 4. The spectacular image of the athletes with physical impairment is mobilized as an, an, the image of superhumans. One of the main themes this poster is pushing forward is a the capability of flexible bodies, which is the enabled by and represented as boundary crossing between self, other, nature, technology, and human machine. And here is what I am concerned about, a potential affinity of the current celebration of the post-human or the cyborg theory with its spectacularization of disability as flexible bodies in neoliberal deployment of flexibility. Inspired by the image of the superhumans, what Shibuya's mayors did based on his diversity policy was holding an exhibition titled Super Welfare Expo. And it was obvious that welfare, the word welfare meant not to correct those institutional or architectural disabling barriers, but to display some fashionable, stylish, uh, latest model of prosthetic limbs. And he had even displayed in the latest model the wheelchair in a show window. This is just totally speechless. And now I'd like to move to, on to the analysis of the representation of Amy Mullins, a former American Paralympic sprinter, actress, and fashion model. And I think she's been one of the earliest emblems of superhumans. Although several disability scholars examine the image of her prosthetic body in terms of visibility or visuality, I'd rather like to focus on her on the discursive effects evoked or reproduced through those spectacularized images with a focus on her talk at TED conference in 2009 titled titled The Opportunity of Adversity. By doing so, I attempt to show how it constructs uh, her image as uh, the new, stylish, flexible superhumans, or even posthuman, rather than a traditional image of super creep, in tandem with the visual image of her body with flexibly changeable prosthetic legs by which her flexibility is literally staged up. Uh, no. <coughs> It is interesting that Merkert Smith analyzed the pervasive image of Mullen's prosthetic bodies and insists that she is passing as disabled. Smith notes, quote, Amy Mullins was not allowed to be an amputee or disabled. More precisely, her disability was simply seen as an, another perfect example of post-human progress, a simple celebration of the human spirit's victory over adversity, unquote. Although I, I, I agree with Smith to the extent that he critically reads her images as an example of post-human, but it is important to notice that there is a slight difference between supercrip and superhuman discourses. Whereas the former's emphasis lies in its cliched story of overcoming disability as adversity, an important point of the latter is to be adaptable to change by embracing adversity. Her talk, in her talk, Mullins' talk, The Opportunity of Adversity, Mullins expresses the uncomfortable feelings about the phrase overcoming adversity. And she rather states that that the human ability to adapt 
is our greatest asset by paraphrasing Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Quote, it's not the strong, strongest of the species that survives, nor, it's the, nor is it the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. So again, transformation, adaptation is our greatest human skill, unquote. This talk by Mullins at TED conference is a perfect example that shows what's new about the superhuman or even post-human post and why the dominant norm norms in this neoliberal age desire them so much rather than being dis destabilized or threatened by them. In her book, Flexible Bodies, Emily Martin writes, quote, a conception of a new elite may be forged that finds the desirable qualities of flexibility and adaptability to change in certain superior in individuals of any ethnic, racial, gender, sexual identity, or age group in the nation. The currency in, the, in which these desirable quality will be figured is health. What will be forged is a conception of fitness in which, just as surely as in 19th century social Darwinism, although the term and mechanism may differ, some will survive and some will not. Uh, when we think about today's increasing attention towards prosthetic bodies as the superhuman or posthuman, both in and out of academic, it would be necessary to reconsider the limitation of the body theory, which solely celebrates the flexibility or fluidity by boundary crossing figures. In terms of capability or survivability, it is very emblematic that the film Mad Max Fury Road in 2000, this year, uh, directed by George Miller, depicts in the guise of feminist plot, disabled bodies when were differentiating Furiosa, represented as a superhuman, sorry, where the, the detachable high-tech prosthetic arms and a full range of capacity from the immortal Joe, the main villain whose death is symbolized by disconnection from the ventilator. Um, so critical intervention is required to illuminate the complex de deployment of the idea of flexibility at the intersections of neoliberalism and capability of the body. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha.